Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, where we disrupt the way you think about your business, your life, and we talk about the three-legged stool of business, which is mind, body, business. Harmonious is the business architecture, the 10 fundamental disciplines you need to grow and scale your business. It's based on what the Fortune 500 does right and what small businesses get really wrong, which is why we go out of business. But the other two legs of the stool cannot and must not be forgotten, mind and body. And guess what? I think we're going to spend a lot of time there today just from getting to know our guest, Jude, a little bit backstage before we hit record. I'm excited for this conversation. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a new topic for the show, but one I'm very excited about. So definitely tune in here. Before we go any further, though, I want to welcome our guest, Jude. Welcome so much to the show. Brandon, thank you so much. I'm very excited to have this conversation with you. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited too. So, but before we dive in, your name on the screen says it is cut off, but it says Jude <laughs> Sullivan, the fitness pastor. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Of course. So, um, the fitness pastor. Uh, there's uh, people think, well, is he really a pastor? Is he ordained? And I'm not. So I just want to get that out of the way first and foremost. But um, when I was working in healthcare, I, I had a successful 35 year career in healthcare as a clinical exercise physiologist. In the last 10 years of the career, I migrated into integrative and healthcare, you know, alternative and complementary care. And my role was to help develop uh, research protocols that would bring alternative and complementary care practices into mainstream medicine. So, you know, there's a little bit of pushback, you know, from Western medicine right now. And so if you can validate this through, you know, the scientific method, um, it gets accepted and people, you know, realize that it, it has value. And so that was kind of what our role was. And we are doing a, a protocol as a 10 year protocol uh, in mindfulness meditation. I had de helped develop and then I ran uh, the, what they called it, the active control group. And uh, we were working with one of the groups. And as we came to the tail end of this group, uh, one of the women came up to me and she goes, you know, Jude, you remind me of being a fitness pastor. <laughs> and it, it kind of took me by surprise, but it really warmed my heart because for me, it felt like, and I think a lot of us, maybe if we're not struggling with it, we're, we're striving for this. It felt like who I was, was integrating with what it is I was doing. And I, I really felt like that connection was there. And um, I just kind of let it go. But I came home and I told my wife about it. She's like, oh, my gosh, you've got to keep that name. <laughs> I'm like, what? And so, you know, she's a little bit more business savvy than I am. At least she's had more experience than me. And so it's been a nice moniker that people can help identify with me and remember me. And so I, I kind of put that out there. But it does still get a little bit, you know, confusion about whether or not I'm actually a pastor, but um, <laughs> if nothing else, it's a good conversation starter, like my name. Um, you know, people identify Jude with Hey Jude and the Beatles or something like that. So if you can't remember me one way, you can remember me another. And so, yeah, that's kind of how that came about. That's awesome. All right. Fitness pastor, I, you know, it might be in line with today's conversation a little <laughs> bit. We'll get there in a second, of course, but um, I love, I love the nickname. I love how you got it. 35 years in one career. Now you're transitioning to another. Um, yep. I'm excited about what you're doing. Give me a little bit. Give me the high level overview of, of what you're doing now. And then I want to dive into um, how that can help people. Right. So obviously, I think, you know, almost anybody in healthcare, you know, they have a heart for people. Um, they they want to figure out a way where they can invest themselves into another person and help them. And, you know, my story isn't an exception to that. I I was an overweight kid uh, growing up and I got sick and tired of it. And so I made some changes that maybe probably knowing me now, I wouldn't have recommended, but I, you know, it, it was what I decided to do. And it, it helped me lose weight. Um, but as I was growing and maturing physically, I also became a little bit more uh, uh, improved in terms of my athleticism and it, it got me some recognition and things of that nature. And to make a long story short, it, it helped kind of project me into this healthcare uh, situation. I was working with athletes a lot early in my career as an exercise physiologist and a sports coach. And uh, that, that was great. You know, I worked with a lot of really good athletes, 
a lot of uh, weekend warriors who are really taking their, their health and their fitness seriously. But I still felt like there was something missing. You know, I, as cool as that was, I felt like, you know, there's got to be something else. My father was becoming ill. He had heart disease. Um, he became diabetic. And I'm watching, you know, the health system that I'm working in kind of failing him. And, you know, it just kind of made me question inside. I wasn't really taking these conversations to anybody else, but I was just really wondering about that. And then uh, one of the physicians who came into our program started our integrative health program. And so that really was speaking to me because I felt like, you know, you said uh, mind and body, you know, I think spirit is the other part of it, you know, and, you know, that it kind of can speak to this. You know, I have definite opinions about that, which I, maybe we can share at some point, but, you know, we're spiritual beings as much as we are physical beings and emotional beings. And I felt like we needed to address that. And so <clears throat> that's kind of where my heart was. And it's kind of where it is right now. I've been coaching people for 35 years in some way, shape or form. So I have a lot, I have a lot of experience working with people individually, small groups, running big programs. Um, but, you know, when I retired, you know, from a corporate structure where, you know, kind of the rules were set around me and I had to work within the rules. Now I'm able to, to coach people um, with, with a, uh, a program which we call God Talks. And so my role is as a coach is to help people hear God in their life uh, so that they can unify what it is that they want to do with who it is that they are and kind of goes back to what it is that I felt like I got with the fitness pastor name. Um, I think that's kind of the missing piece for, for, for people is, you know, they, they're doing something, may, they may be magnificently successful, but are they really, is it really speaking to what their purpose, their life purpose is? And so there might be a little discontent for people um, if they're not meeting that in addition to what it is that they're actually doing, even if they're successful. So my role as a coach, a God Dogs, God Talks coach specifically, is to help people hear God in their lives and and to to respond and, and to to move forward. Yeah, I think this is such an important conversation. And you you may have just broken my model a little bit. I might have to add a fourth leg to the stool. I typically <laughs> put spirit, it's I, I fully understand and agree with you on that. I typically put it is an integration with the mind and the body. So it, it still sure. falls within the stool and it's obviously very important. That's why we're having this conversation. Um, but one one last thing too, for those of you watching and listening, uh, Jude has is sending me a quick start guide on this that we will include a link to in the show notes. So if yep. you want to know how to get started and figure this out for yourself, um, that's going to be a very helpful guide that you can go and download and take that first step. But I want to dive in. Before we get to the specifics of, of kind of how to get started on this path, um, can you walk me through your transition and your, I guess, spiritual discovery journey when you started way back when and what that looked like for you? Right. So that's really, I'll try to keep the Cliff Notes version of this. But um, you know, when I grew up, I, I was born and raised into a Catholic family. And, uh, you know, going to church and being involved in uh, the Catholic faith was important to me. Uh, my, my father's mother, my grandmother uh, lived with us. She was an Irish Catholic. She was an immigrant. Um, and she was very devoted. And she had visions, uh, which I didn't get a lot of details about that, but I know that she had visions. And I felt like at a young age that um, I was communicating but I didn't know how, I didn't, I couldn't articulate it. Even now, I don't know if I have the language to do it, but you know you're being, you're in communication or conversation uh, and it's guiding you in terms of some decisions that you're making. And the more you get off track with that, the more problems you seem to have. Um, but once you kind of, you know, unify what it is that you think you're hearing with what it is that's really happening, um, you start to get some real clarity and some real focus on, on what it is that you're doing. And so I thought I was going to be a priest. I, you know, I went to a high school seminary. Uh, I, I was taking it that seriously, the decision making at that time. Um, and by the time I reached graduation age, uh, I knew I wasn't going to be a priest. But my faith had grown, you know, pretty much, you know, quite a bit. And so, like anybody else, you know, I now I'm in my 20s. I I didn't really know what it is I wanted to do. 
Um, and so I kind of lo got lost a little bit and I was struggling for a number of years and my father helped redirect me uh, professionally in terms of, you know, getting back on track academically. And then uh, that helped a lot, you know, and so I, I'm grateful to my parents, you know, for that. Um, and I, I, I came back to my faith at that time as well. And so uh, as I, I got married and then unfortunately what happened is uh, we had lost two children. Hmm. And I think, you know, with anybody who's dealt with adversity, you know, that can be, I don't want to say make or break, but it, it can be a real pivotal point in your life in terms of decisions that you're making, um, ideas that you have, directions that you want to go with your life. And for me, uh, that was one of those times, you know, where it really challenged me. It took me deeper. Um, and I think that's a lot of what adversity does. Um, you know, it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's wise, much less, you know, necessary to try to live a life free from um, adversity, obstacles, or difficulty. Um, not that we seek these things, you know, they kind of have a way to, to find, the, uh, find their way to us anyway. Um, but it, it helps. Um, it's kind of like iron sharpening iron. You know, when you go through these things, you, you develop perseverance, you develop endurance, uh, you develop a, you know, a grit, a toughness, um, and you really start to understand um, some things about yourself and how you tick. And in my case, also what God really meant to me. And so what happened is I, I left religion and I developed a relationship uh, with God. So I'm a disciple of Jesus. You know, that's plain and simple. And so that's where it took me. And um, that first marriage ended up ending. I, I became remarried to a woman who was a widow. And so she had similar types of adversity. And so th together that's helped us in terms of, you know, kind of helping unify ourselves in terms of what we believe individually and then collectively as we came together as a husband and a wife and, and how we raise our family. And like I said, it was at that time where I developed the name fitness pastor. So I felt like I was actually living out what it is that I was doing and, you know, somebody actually could see that. And so that was very gratifying to me. And now I have the opportunity to actually do this as a business. And so that fires me up big time. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And just starting to launch this is, you know, we discussed briefly off camera and uh, I am just so excited about, you know, what the, the future has in store for me now with this. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's an amazing story of, of transformation and growth and relationship. And I, I think that's, that's one of the things that frustrates me most with all religion is when we focus on the religion, I think people only see right and wrong and they condemn others. They judge others, which I mean, it says in, I think every religion not to judge. That's a foundational principle. I too am a disciple of Jesus. And I, I believe we're on a very similar track. Mm -hmm. So I, but what I want to ask you is how I see that relationship mm -hmm. is a, a level of spirituality, not religion. I've, obviously it's a, denominate a religious denomination but it's not yeah. about right or wrong it is about relationship and growth and togetherness so can you tell me from your experience and and through helping others through this process how do you develop that relationship how do you hear god and how how do you take that into your business and into your life so that you can grow in all areas I love this question. question. <laughs> I, I love this conversation. This is the best. Um, how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. How about, if we run over, we're going to split this into two parts. Okay, I'm going to put that totally, out there right now. I'm totally down with that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think what you said is the it. You know, it comes down to a relationship. So, think it, what makes it um, different is that God isn't present in physical form. And so what I help people realize is, you know, we are more than anything, we're spiritual beings. We have a soul, which is our mind, our will and our emotions, and we live in a body. And so we have to think of it from the top down. It's like what's happening in our spirit? What do we know about our spirit? And for me, I, I go to the Bible to understand that. 
and then I let that sink down through my soul and into my body, what the world will want you to do is to live through your body and then take it up into your spirit. And so that's what Jesus came to do is to flip everything upside down. And like you said, you know, one, one of his greatest antagonists were the Pharisee, you know, and, and other religious rulers because they were so, uh, you know, focused on doctrine and rules. And the rules were there out of necessity, but they had lost, you know, what the intention of the rules were for. And he came to, you know, obviously break that up and just say, this, this is the new covenant. You know, that's the old way. Here's the new way. Um, you have a choice to make. And so we all have a choice to make. Um, I would say it, it's better to not, not wait for adversity to come <laughs> before you try to do this and, and to know that um, results are important, you know, especially if you're in business. And I was just thinking about this actually earlier today. You know, you're not going to survive in business unless you're getting results. And a lot of people want to say, well, it's all about the process. Well, yeah. But if you're not getting results, they don't care what the process is. However, if you're getting results, God is very interested in the process of what's happened to get to those results. And his biggest concern is what is my relationship with him? And what is your relationship with him? Because first and foremost, he wants to have a relationship with you. Yes, he wants to prosper you and he wants you to have an abundant life but not at the expense of losing a relationship with him. And so I, I think of it like my marriage to my wife. You know, if I just come to her when I'm having a problem, what kind of a relationship are we going to have together? But if I'm not seeking her out and wanting to have her um, speak with me or for me to listen to her, if I allow myself to get distracted where I'm not having conversations with her or I'm not listening to her, um, you know, this society, you know, it's, it microwaves everything, right? And so we have the, you know, <laughs> the intention span of a flea. If, if we can slow ourselves down, you know, be still and know I'm God, you know, that's actually a, a Bible verse. Um, if we can slow ourselves down, remove the distractions from our life and listen, um, that's the the most important thing. And so if that can we, if we can let that be the starting point and then be patient, um, you know, we're just uh, puny humans. It's amazing that God wants to be in relationship with us. Um, but he's not going to give us the whole meal in one sitting. He's going to deliver it over time. And then we 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 realize how how loving he is you know, how caring he is, how good he is, and, and how much he wants our best uh, in, the, in this life. Yeah, I mean, this could be a three-day episode. That's, that's the sense <laughs> I'm, I'm getting here. There was so much to unpack in just that answer. But yeah. I want to highlight a couple things, and then uh, we, we will wrap up this episode, not to say we won't have a part two very soon, but <laughs> Sounds good. you said a couple of things that were really, really important. I love the wife comment because that it's so true. And I think we can all picture that wife, spouse, significant other, whatever. If you're in a relationship with someone, if you only go to them at the time of your need, you will lose that relationship. It will not be that strong. You could have one, but it won't be as strong as it could be. That's an important note. And the other thing you said was microwave culture, Amazon culture, whatever you want to call it. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, I need it now uh, mentality. And that's not how relationship, any relationship is built with, with right. another human, with, with God, with anything, you cannot build a relationship in quick doses. So I want to unpack that a little bit. And, mm -hmm. you know, selfishly as business owners, we, we do tend to think we want things quickly and we're impatient. Sure. Yep. Tell me about, I, I know my story and I know the significant benefits of this, but what is the clarity you receive in business and in life by developing this relationship with God, with your higher spiritual self and, and how that can guide you and not only guide you, but propel you forward in business? So again, that's an outstanding question. Again, I, what I think it does is it, it, you know, we're prone to mistakes, but the mistakes that we'll have will be fewer. And the magnitude of those mistakes will be smaller. 
And so, you know, we're, I don't want to say we're just human. We're human. We're God's best, greatest creation. So I don't want to minimize that. But at the same time, you know, we're, we're prone to foibles. You know, we, we have bad ideas. We get caught up in emotion and we become reactive. And I would say in terms of clarity, uh, as you first, you know, projected that question, it, you, you'll have a sense of clarity and that all you need is what the next step is. You might have a vision that's out here and that that's important. You need to know <laughs> where you're going, but God's going to give you what's the next step because he wants you to move in faith. And the only way you can move in faith with him is to be in relationship with him. Otherwise, you, you can take that next step, but you could fall off a cliff or you could slip on, you know, who knows what. And then you've got all the consequences that go along with that. And the other thing that I think about is if I'm working with another human being, you know, do I am I working in love with this person? You know, and if it's somebody who's maybe crossed me, my as a Christian, especially, I'm not to retaliate. I'm to, if they're my enemy, I'm to pray for them. <laughs> That's a big ask for anybody, but then to think about that from a business perspective, um, that can be hard. And, you know, I'm not saying that if somebody did you wrong, that you don't, there aren't the consequences for them and that, you know, that needs to be settled. But at the same time, you know, if I'm working with another believer, that shouldn't even be a problem. That shouldn't even be an issue. We can move together forward because we're both on the same page. But if it's somebody who's not, and I have an opportunity to witness to them through the, the work that I do with them, if nothing else, and if they say they don't even want me to be their coach, if they know that they were respected, that I uh, re had respect for their dignity, I love them as a human being, that's a win because I just planted a seed for them. And again, for me and my faith, that has to be first and foremost. Yes, I, I have a business. I want the business to be successful. I'm moving my business forward. But when I'm working with people, God's bringing these people to me. You know, if I'm listening to God as I run my own business, <clears throat> I should be thinking about these people have been brought to me. I don't even know why in some cases, but they were brought to me. I asked for that. And now it's up to me to take the next step. So that that I'm not sure if I answered it fully, but that's kind of the how do I see that. No, you did. And what's you know, what's what's been important for me is um is really two things. Uh, first and foremost, if you ask for something, the way you get it is not always the way you want to get it. If you ask for patience, you will be tested and you will <laughs> grow into patience. You will not receive patience as a gift. So know that and understand that. And also, um, you know, I, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. I had a moment this morning, somebody cut me off on the road and anger immediately. But then I was like, okay, calm down, calm down. That's not <clears throat> why we're here. There's no such thing as perfect. There's one perfect human being that ever lived. We talked about him here, Jesus. And yeah. that is the important part is, is to try and do your best and not beat yourself up when you're not perfect. So um, I am sure this will be a two-part episode because I we need to dive in deeper and, <laughs> and there's more to unpack here as far yeah. as your, your business growth and your spirituality. Um, oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was was just the power of discernment to just go within and say, you know, is this is this right? Is this wrong? There, there are temptations and bad people in the world and every opportunity may look good, but the power of discernment and connecting with your spiritual self to say, is this for me? Is this, is this from God? Is this, you know, maybe from darkness, right? That is very important in business. And I've been down both paths and I can yep. tell you to have the choice and to have the discernment between the choices is very key. Um, yep. So I mentioned it earlier, Jude has a quick start guide on how you can start this process. Um, I know for a lot of people, this is a, a touchy topic and a, maybe a taboo conversation. I don't care. He doesn't care if you want help and you want to maybe take that first step, whether it's a comment or a DM, please reach out to us. We want to help. We want to love on you and, and give you the clarity and support that we have both received. And we want to spread that, that light and that confidence and that clarity to other people. Yeah. So however it is, please reach out to us. We, we ultimately just want to help you and connect you with that power. 
Um, so Jude, I want to thank you for, for coming and shedding the light on this, uh, no pun intended, but bringing this topic to surface because it's it's so important and it's so powerful and it's absent in business in a lot of places and I'm glad that you're you're fixing that so thank you, Brandon. Thank you again. I you know with these podcasts sometimes it's you're not sure how you get connected with people but I I am so grateful that we are connected and if we do another one I can't wait for that to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I am too. Now, listen, Jude is just starting his business. Like he said, um, let's follow up in a few months. I want to see your journey. I want to yeah. see how this grows, how you're able to spread this word and the good work and and help other people grow at the same time. So we will definitely have a part two that will be announced at some point. Um, and if you want to grow yourself, reach out to Jude, get the yep. quick start guide that's in the description. Um, this was definitely... I got to revisit the model, but I think it's still a mind and body conversation. <laughs> it's a spirit conversation. It will help you in your business. I promise yeah. you I'm living proof of that. So is Jude. Thank you for sticking around and watching wherever you are, whatever platform you're on, like comment, subscribe, dislike. That's okay. It's okay to disagree with us. We want to help you. Like I said, exactly. whatever it is, but make sure you leave your feedback. We want to hear it and we want to help you along this journey. We could not do this episode and this podcast without you. So Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious 